So let's bring in Hollywood divorce attorney David Glass for more on this. David, people going through divorces are going through some of the hardest times of their lives, and a lot of what they're going through is emotional. And in any divorce, there's a huge sense of loss, and the loss of relationship, of money, some friends. We're back again for another episode of the Hourglass Podcast, where family law and psychology intersect. I'm David Glass, certified family law specialist, former psychologist, and the author of Moving On, Redesigning Your Emotional, Financial, and Social Life After Divorce. Today, we continue our mission to do all we can to help those going through a breakup or divorce find ways to make the trauma of it all a little bit easier, more understandable, smoother, and to help them find motivation and inspiration to move on. How? By continuing to share advice and insights from a variety of experts, specialists who are regarded as the best in their respective fields, and often with a dose of humor. Today we have a very entertaining episode. We talk a lot about recovery from divorce on the Hourglass podcast, and today's show features a guest who is a real innovator in finding a solution to the demise of his marriage. In my 25 years as a family law attorney, I've never heard of a funnier way to exact revenge. Here's the deal. We learned that Kevin Cotter from Tucson, Arizona, split with his wife of 12 years in 2009. She left the house, he writes, and he noticed that she left one item behind in their shared closet, her wedding dress. When asked what he should do with it, she replied, whatever the bleep you want. Deciding to take her up on that, Kevin gathered with his family and went to work devising 101 uses for his ex-wife's wedding dress. Along with his brother Colin, who served as his photographer, Kevin went to work. He's now married with a blended family of five and works as the controller of his wife's online business, Get Mom Strong. But he's here with us today to share his hilarious story. Incidentally, the book got a lot of media coverage when it was first released. And today, it continues to sell. I'll let Kevin tell you more about it, and we have some photos for you. But just as a tease, some of the uses he availed himself included a hammock, a shoe polish rag, oven mitts, golf club towel, shower curtain, pasta strainer, painting canvas, punching bag, headdress, and scarecrow outfit. He even took a few threads from the dress and used them as dental floss. He even used the box the dress was packaged in as a coffee table or footrest. The best use was the day he wrote to the dress's manufacturer to compliment them on the durability of the fabric. So sturdy was it that he towed a small SUV with it for a mile without a single tear. Coming to us live via Zoom from Tucson is author Kevin Cotter. Welcome. Hey, thanks. Happy to be here. Okay, so of the 101 uses you came up with in your book, what was your favorite? Oh, I've got a couple. It's tough. The, the one that became the banner for my website, which was the Darth Vader Scarecrow. If I had to pick one, it's going to be the Darth Vader Scarecrow, um, which actually is kind of a funny story because we had Scarecrow as one of the ideas. But when we went to stage it, we had no plan for what to use for its head. And I just started rummaging around the house. And when I stumbled across the Darth Vader mask, I, you know, it just made sense. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the book is hilarious. When I read through it, I was laughing out loud to myself while reading, which is a very rare thing to happen. Uh, you know, just some of the, the ones I remembered, you did a, a, a go team. I can't remember what team it was for, but you did a banner for a football game. Oh, yeah. We got some questions going through security at the University of Arizona when we took that to a football game, for sure. Right. <laughs> we had to recruit some people in the stands to, you know, in order to display it properly. Right. It's a big dress. It's, yeah, very big dress. And, uh, and you got those people to cooperate. And then you got a great photo. For sure. Uh, I mentioned just a couple of the uses for the, your ex-wife's wedding dress. Can you give our audience a more expansive list of the various uses that you found? Yeah. Well, when we, I, I had, I actually came up with about, and I can't say I, but my family and I over dinner one night at my mom and dad's house after my divorce organically came up with a list of about 60 ideas. Wow. Uh, and I actually, it was a, I, they didn't know. This was a couple months after my divorce. I shared with them that I had the dress. <laughs> and, and, I, and I genuinely asked, like, what should I do with it? 
And I immediately got some creative responses. Um, my mom said it would make a nice doormat. My brother had a, a less clean application for it. <laughs> we took out a pen and paper and just started writing them all down. So originally we were thinking practical and manly, you know, like uh -huh. uh, shoe polish for my soccer cleats, grill cover, fishing net. Uh, but then when I started my blog, I shared that I hoped to get to 101 and I asked people for suggestions. And that's when we got all sorts of great ideas like uh, snow camo, which actually my, my, it is probably my second favorite use. Um, I would have never thought to use it as snow camo and we don't get a lot of snow in the desert here, but right. an hour away we do. And so th those ended up being some great pictures too. Yeah, sure. And so... Um, and so if you came up with the first 60 at dinner with your family, how long did it take you to complete the list of 101? Well, pretty much as soon as I, as soon as I launched my, my website, I mean, within, within days, it went viral. Right. Um, oddly, around the world before it was here. So I was getting ideas from Australia. <laughs> and, uh, and so within days of the website launching with the traffic it got, I had... I had thousands of, of emails to the uh, Gmail account that I shared and, right. and plenty of ideas. Amazing. How did you feel after completing the 101? When you finished that 101st picture, put it all together as a book, exactly how did you feel? Oh man, I felt, I mean, the whole process. So my brother, I have, I have three sisters and one brother. My, my, my brother is six years younger than me and he's my best friend. So he was my partner in crime as we staged all these and wandered around town, got lots of funny looks for, yeah. for a lot of them because quite a few of them were in public. Yeah. Uh, but, but the whole thing, it, you know, it's, it's hard to articulate, but, but it, really, it, it really was the perfect way for me to process, you know, just a really difficult situation, hanging out with my brother, laughing, um, even when we were in, when we were in, taking the pictures and staging these, we were conspiring, you know, coming up right. with ideas. And so we had this whole process that took months um, that just really was, was enjoyable throughout. But yeah, finally seeing it come together as, as, as a book, it, it was something special. Amazing. And uh, do you still have any remnants of the dress hanging around? You know, so I moved about um, a year and a half ago and I still had the dress. Mm -hmm. And when I moved, uh, we made a big move in town. But uh, but at that point, I decided to part ways with it. Um, right. I do have a fly in my fly box. I'm a fly right. fisherman, so I made I made some flies from the dress, and I do still have a fly. Uh, but other than that, the dress and I have parted ways. So tur tur turn that chapter. Excellent. And so um, now I understand you're you're uh, married. You have a blended family. Um, uh, what did your wife think when she found out that you were the author of this book? So the book actually hadn't been published oh. um, when, when we met and I had, I had pretty much all the pictures taken and, you know, and we, we had been on a number of dates and I, I knew that I really liked her and I, I just felt obligated to let her in on my project. Sure. So, so one night I just said, hey, there's something that I need to show you. And I sat her down at my computer and started showing her the pictures. And she got the humor, thankfully. You know, right. she thought that it was, she, you know, she, she thought it was funny. And so mm -hmm. I'm very grateful that, that uh, she was able to see the lighter side of, of what I was up to and didn't think that I was, it did, she, did, she didn't run away. I didn't scare her off. Absolutely. An amazing litmus, litmus test. Is this someone I can live with going forward? Exactly. Yeah, we have very similar senses of humor. So. Yeah, and that goes a long way. Now, I understand that you and your wife have a company that helps new moms. What does that company do? Oh, yeah. Well, Ashley, she started. So, so when I got divorced, I had two children. Um, they were nine and seven at that time. That was in mm -hmm. 2009. And when I met Ashley... Um, we, we wanted, I'd always wanted more than two. Um, and when I met her, she was also, and she had a little boy, but also was interested in having more children. And so, uh, because I had had a vasectomy in my past life, it mm -hmm. wasn't easy to, 
grow our family. Right. And so we ended up uh, going the IVF route and mm -hmm. which produced two wonderful boys. We just had their nine year birthday party today. Um, so Amazing. Got twins and which, which uh, took a toll on her. They were 13 pounds, the two of them combined. Wow. And so it was hard for her to, um, to get back into working out safely after she had the babies. And so she did a lot of work and, and um, came up with a program that she used herself to kind of heal her, her um, ab separation. And then she launched a website. And I mean, I couldn't be more proud of her. Uh, she is changing lives in, in a very dramatic way every day. So it's really cool. It's been cool to be a part of. Um, she started it not as a business, just as a, you know, just wanted to share what she learned because she felt that there was a need out there for women mm -hmm. at, at, um, at, after having babies. And it just took off. And we got to a point where we were both so busy that it made sense for me to, um, to pack in my sales job of 24 years. And now I'm the resident bus driver, janitor, <laughs> you know, I wear a few different hats. She, right. she is the creator. She's the mastermind. I, I feel a you know a supporting a supporting role, but I'm it's really cool to be riding shotgun for what she's doing because it's she's really helping a lot of people. But what's uh, what's incredible incredible to me about your story is uh, you had a situation uh, and you figured out a humorous way out of it. You introduced that idea to your future wife, and she thought it was hilarious. And now she has a particular situation that she had to figure out a solution for, and it's developed into a business that the two of you work for. I mean, that's like, that's like bottling lightning three or four times in a row. It is pretty amazing how things have fallen into place for us. I mean, and we both went through difficult divorces. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hers, it's both of our second marriages. And how everything has come together, we just, um, so beyond the twins, uh, she, she always wanted one more. Um, right. We had some, we, we actually had uh, embryos after the twins. And, mm -hmm. and finally, she got the courage after that difficult pregnancy to try one more time. And, and it wasn't successful. Mm -hmm. And so um, she, she, she actually, this is another crazy, this, this story of all the stories, she shared on show, social media that our last transfers failed and, and that we might explore adoption. Yeah. And in 10 minutes, a woman reached out to her and said that she knew of a woman in Tucson who was looking for a family for her baby, wow. um, who was 22 weeks pregnant at the time. And we just adopted that little boy. He was born on the day before Thanksgiving. Wow. So now we have the final piece of our family. We've got a two month old newborn, um, another boy to our clan of boys. And mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty remarkable how things have, have come together for us. We feel very, very fortunate. Well, congratulations on the baby. That, that's great yeah, news. Yeah. So, Kevin, you did the book about the wedding dress. Um, uh, any suggestions on what to do with a groom's tuxedo that a woman has left at the end of their marriage? You know what? I had so many women reach out to me, and a lot of them said they want, you know, like, I would love to do this with my ex-husband's tuxedo. I mean, really, a lot of the same things apply. You know, right. I, I'm sure you could, um, you know, I'm sure you could polish some shoes. I don't think you could tow a car with a tuxedo, yeah. but uh, it's a, 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 a well-made wedding dress can actually tow a vehicle. So you're going to be limited to some of the smaller applications, mm -hmm. you know, tissue, uh, shoe polish, cloth. Um, you know, you could check your oil. I'm sure gas cap. A few, a few, a few of those. Right. The grander ones. You know, they really require a wedding. Well, so yeah, that that's just one of those ideas that doesn't have legs. That's I don't. Well, I mean, you could get creative, but I I, I don't think it would be quite as much fun. Uh, any other ideas brewing for a future book? Oh man, I mean, she might be able to write a book based on what she's doing. I don't know that I, you know, how to manage on five hours of sleep at age forty nine. <laughs> maybe I don't know if there's a market for that, but that's what I'm up to right now. Is uh. Right. It's starting all over with a, with a newborn, at, you know, kind of a, if, if I were a woman, it, they would say I, it's a geriatric fatherhood because that's right. I mean, once they're like 38, I think that's what they call them in pregnancy. But so 
Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm up to. I don't have any other any, any other things related to the, to the wedding dress. So that's where, that's where we're at now. I, I kind of think between you and your wife, there's at least one other revolutionary idea out there that's going to catch fire. I'm going to I'm going to put you on a Google uh, uh, tracing thing to say I, I want to be there when you come up with your next idea. All right. Anyway, thanks so much for joining us today. It was an absolute pleasure and a lot of fun to talk to you. Oh, thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate it. It's time to close out the show with another song choice. I've chosen George Strait's Give It Away. I think the lyrics speak for themselves. In keeping with the words in this song and the backstory of the left behind wedding dress, what can you get rid of? Maybe you have some item from your marriage that you need to discard, but haven't done so yet. If you do, let it go. It might be one more way to heal. In the meantime, take good care of your time. It's a precious commodity that's all yours. And don't give it away unless you do so for a very good reason. <laughs>